you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever heard of Raggedy Ann and Andy? A few have heard of their adventures, Bear. Well, Raggedy Ann and Andy just discovered a round white pebble, and they're asking each other if it could be a magic wishing pebble. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if it is magic and if anyone else might want it too. Raggedy Ann's Wishing Pebble by Johnny Gruel. Raggedy Ann and Andy were rag dolls stuffed with nice white cotton. They had bright shoe button eyes and happy smiles painted on their rag faces. One day they were poking about by the looking glass brook when Raggedy Andy held up a round white pebble. Do you think this is a wishing pebble? he asked. I have no idea, said Raggedy Ann. Let's make a wish. Why don't we wish for something for our friends, the muskrats? Raggedy Andy asked. They always give us muskrat bread and butter when we visit. Raggedy Ann and Andy both squeezed the pebble as hard as they could, and Raggedy Ann said, I wish the muskrats had a magic soda water fountain right in their living room. They agreed that it was a good wish, and then they went to sleep in the sun. The dolls were awakened a little later by Freddy Field Mouse. There's a magic soda water fountain in the muskrats' home, he exclaimed. They're inviting everyone for ice cream sodas. He scampered off. That means the wishing pebble was real, Raggedy Ann said. Let's go see the fountain. She buried the pebble in the sand before heading off to the muskrats. Raggedy Ann and Andy found a crowd of animals at the muskrats' home, all drinking sodas. When the dolls told them about the magic wishing pebble, Mr. and Mrs. Muskrat thanked them for their kindness. Mrs. Muskrat snipped a hole in the center of each doll's mouth so they could try the sodas for themselves. Whee! Raggedy Ann cried after she and Andy drank 15 ice cream sodas. I don't believe I can drink another one. Let's go find the wishing pebble that I buried in the sand. That's a fine idea, cried Mrs. Muskrat. She and the other animals and the dolls ran to the brook. They hunted in the loose sand on the bank, but they couldn't find the wishing pebble. Mr. Muskrat had stayed home to wash the soda glasses but now he ran to join them. It's gone, he cried. The magic fountain just disappeared. Of course it's gone, a voice sounded from across the brook. Who is that? Raggedy Andy shouted. Ha ha, said the voice. I saw where Raggedy Ann buried the wishing pebble. I took it and wished the magic soda fountain would disappear from the muskrat's house. Now I have the fountain and the wishing pebble too. Mrs. Muskrat couldn't keep from crying. I had planned on all of our friends helping themselves to ice cream sodas from the magic fountain, she sobbed. Mr. Muskrat wiped his eyes. It's so nice to have a cold ice cream soda on a hot day. Don't cry, said Raggedy Ann. We'll get the pebble back. 
While the animals were comforting the muskrats, Raggedy Ann and Andy slipped away and crossed the brook. They got a little wet, but they soon dried in the sunshine. Do you know what? asked Raggedy Ann. I'll bet whoever has the wishing pebble can't make the fountain work because he is so unkind. Stop talking about me, said the mysterious voice. I'll bet you two old rag dolls are the reason my sodas taste like burnt candy. Raggedy Ann and Andy ignored the voice and walked along the bank, looking for clues to the missing pebble. Just as they passed under a large tree, a big checkered tablecloth fell down on top of their heads. Before they could untangle themselves, their feet were tied together by a little man with thin legs and a long nose. And when he spoke, they recognized the mysterious voice. It was Minky, who was known by everyone for his tricks and pranks. Ha, said Minky, I'm not letting you go until you tell me how to use the wishing pebble. I need a new magic fountain with soda that tastes sweet. Selfish man, Raggedy Ann laughed at Minky. The wishing pebble only brings good things when you wish for something nice for others. Suddenly, Minky let out a howl and fell onto the grass. Something is biting me! Tears streamed down his face as he got to his feet and ran away. There! Clifton Crawdad appeared suddenly, rubbing his big claws together. Minky filled my doorway with mud one day, and it took me a long time to clean it out. Now I've pinched him with my claws, so we're even. He quickly untied the dolls. Thank you, said Raggedy Andy. We'd better find Minky. It's no trouble, Clifton said, and burrowed back into his mud house. Raggedy Ann and Andy crossed the brook again and ran into Winnie Woodchuck. What happened? she asked. You are soaking wet. Come inside this minute. She hustled Raggedy Ann and Andy inside their home and Walter Woodchuck made them feel comfortable in front of the crackly fire. They sat and drank licorice tea and ate woodchuck cookies, which are made from twigs and hazelnuts. Suddenly the door burst open and Minky stopped inside. Give me those cookies, he shouted. Now you march right out, Mr. Minky, said Winnie Woodchuck. You are very rude. But before he could leave, Raggedy Andy said, That pebble belongs to us! He grabbed Minky by his jacket. Stop, Andy! cried Raggedy Ann. Now you're being mean. And when you're unkind, the wishing pebble won't work properly. That's why Minky's sodas aren't sweet. Raggedy Andy let go of Minky, and the little man ran out the door. It was quiet for a minute, then Raggedy Ann's shoe button eyes twinkled, and she whispered, I'll bet Minky is listening outside the window. Walter Woodchuck smiled. Let's go outside and look for the magic lollipop garden, he said loudly. Someone told me it's growing in the grass by the brook. The woodchucks and the dolls snuck down to the brook where Minky was crawling in the long grass. What are you looking for? asked Raggedy Ann. You know perfectly well, Minky replied angrily. Go away! The magic lollipops are mine! 
Then he slipped in the muddy grass and fell into the deepest part of the brook. Minky couldn't swim very well, so Raggedy Ann held out a long stick to him and pulled him ashore. Why are you so kind when I was mean to you? The little man asked. Water dripped from his jacket and long nose. It was wrong of me to take your lovely wishing pebble. It's just that none of the animals like me. So I wanted to play a trick on them, he sniffed loudly. Raggedy Ann smiled. Don't feel sad, Minky, she said. She held out the wishing pebble, which had fallen from Minky's pocket. I just wished the soda fountain was back at the muskrats. And I wished for a lollipop garden in your backyard. I'll bet if you bring the muskrats some lollipops, they'll give you a soda and let you stay for dinner. They're really very nice once you get to know them. While Minky went to look for his new lollipop garden, Raggedy Ann and Andy decided to try one last soda at the muskrat's house. On their way home, they passed Minky digging in his garden. They waved goodbye and then left to join their friends in the nursery. Bear's wondering, do you think the magic would have worked if Raggedy Ann and Andy just wished for Minky to stop being mean? Some say no, Bear. They had to do something. Hmm. Bear's asking if sharing their magic with Minky helped him be kind. Many say yes, Bear. Well, Bear hopes the kind things you do will help others want to be kind too. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in being kind to everyone. Bye for now. Please subscribe.